Hey everybody, welcome back to another video within the Generative AI tool series. And in this video, we'll talk about quite an interesting topic that has been making quite a lot of buzz lately, and it's around LLM evaluation. And we'll be starting with Langsmith's platform, which offers you great tools and great metrics to start evaluating your LLMs. For example, it provides you quite extensive attributes uh, like conciseness of your answer, correctness of your answers, and relevance of your answers, and a lot more. And we have different tools and techniques and different adjustments that we can make uh, for our model while evaluating it. So we'll learn a whole deal in this video. Make sure you stick to NN, and we make a lot of videos on generative AI, and we try to keep you updated with the greatest tools, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So for the past one and a half years, there has been a tremendous progress in the landscape of LLMs. So in 2023, we saw how the LLM sort of uh, evolved into creating quality text generation for you guys. And 2024 was a year of multimodel. But nobody has been talking about LLM governance or LLM evaluation uh, till date. So we, now we see a lot of these stakeholders uh, bringing up solutions and bringing up platforms where uh, you can thoughtfully uh, judge your LLM and make evaluators around it to judge them and the uh, relevance of their answers and, you know, multiple attributes, as I stated before, can be involved in it, uh, which depends on your specific scenario. So here's a diagram uh, which sort of explains how uh, evaluators work in Langsmith. Uh, you just feed in with your data, and this data would be some like uh, some like the input and output that you have gained out of your uh, RAG application or your chat completion tasks, whatever. Basically, real data that you have generated from the LLM, and you will be feeding this data uh, to the platform, and we'll see how we can do that. So obviously an output would be stated here and there would be an, another process where uh, these inputs would be taken from these examples and they would be run as a task and they would be run by the LLM evaluator or the LLM specific to uh, the evaluator and obviously it's going to generate an output. So you have your own output and then uh, the evaluator would have its own output. And then the whole mechanism of interpretation or whether your answer was closer um, or factual or relevant, all these things come in at the later stage, which is the interpretation. So let's go ahead and let's talk about what Langsmith's platform is all about. So this is what it looks like. You can build a few projects and you can build some data sets around it, which we will be doing. So let's go ahead and let's check this out. So currently I don't have a data set. So before you start the evaluation process, you need some data. And what I've done, I've created like generated some data from ChatGPT, uh, which sort of looks like this. So this is my data. This is a standard CSV. As you can see, I have an input here and I have an expected output here. So most of the questions are pretty straightforward, like what is the chemical formula of water? And there's a one word answer for it. Like what is the capital of France? It's Paris. And uh, you guys know the drill. So I've saved it as a CSV. And here I'm gonna create a data set. I have to upload a CSV over here. So I'm gonna do that. And the name is more like I can edit it, but it's self-generated, so it's fine. And this is a test data set. And select a data type. So my data type is a CSV, which happens to be a key value pair, right? So I'm going to choose this. Uh, but there are specifications around uh, this particular data site is known as KV. Uh, the chat and LLM are more specific to where your uh, one input can have multiple outputs. But in our case, we only have one input, so we're OK. So once we do that, you can see in create schema, I have input fields, which is referred by input, which happens to be uh, the very first column that I have, which refers to the question. And then I have the expected output, which I just showed you guys. It's basically the answer. And here I have a preview, like the input would be what is the chemical formula of water and expected output would be H2O. Perfect, let's go ahead and create it. 
and there we go everything is good to go and now what we can do we can add a evaluator so add evaluator and i'm gonna say test evaluator and the provider we have a couple of providers here we can use chat fireworks we can use um, azure chat open ai but chat chat open ai works for me because it provides all the uh, gpt specific models and i'm gonna choose okay gpt 4.0 uh, for the temperature, as you know, it sets the measure of randomness, so it's somewhere in between, totally fine, no biggie. And we have to generate a prompt for our evaluator. And I'm going to choose, we have a couple of options here. Uh, we have talked about like a few shots before, but I don't want to get into the details about it. So I'm going to just uh, go with create a chat from scratch. What you do here, you specify your input within your document, which happens to be our input itself and uh, then we have to choose submission and reference so in reference I'm gonna put uh, output which happens to be our output generated by our LLM which needs to be evaluated and submission can be reference so below you have a prompt something like this and uh, it's about your assessing the submitting answer on a given task or input based uh, on a set of criteria, here's data. Your data would be injected over here, and that's fine. And then you have a couple of metrics over here. Uh, for example, you can search for correctness. Let's start with this, uh, like it's one of the most basic ones. And I'm going to hit save. Perfect. Uh, now I will be initializing my experiment. And this is like a very cool part where you get all these. Uh, uh, evaluators like choose from our pre-built evaluation chains from the scenario and it says correctness and conciseness so i'm going to choose both of these and as you can see we have relevance coherence harmfulness helpfulness and quite a lot and if you really want to run everything within a code you have a lot of you know ease of doing that from uh, this particular section where you can just install some of their dependencies and get up and running uh, with your code and evaluating your code within your LLM based application. Now I'm going to hit run in the playground. So this is what it is. You have an option to still go ahead and write some sort of a system specific, um, you know, message. I'm not going to write anything. Uh, so here you can see my chat OpenAI uses chat 3.5 turbo, uh, but I can change it to, uh, GPT-40. Here I have like my input uh, and my expected output and from here it's going to generate its own output. So let's go ahead and see that. So I'm going to hit start now and as you can see you see this metric over here computing evaluation score hanging tight. So now you see all the outputs have been generated and some of them are not as concise as uh, the one we already have. Uh, and we'll have to wait for this, these scores because uh, these are still evaluating. All right, so we have our correctness scores and as it was a Boolean, so we have correctness as one score over here, which means everything is good. Uh, we have one, 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 one. So all of these are correct. So our LLM has, uh, our LLM answers have passed uh, you know, their evaluation. What we can do uh, just to make you see that how this works is let me go ahead and change one of these things. So I'm going to change this to Berlin. I'm going to hit submit. And basically, I've updated my data set to say what is the capital of France? It's uh, Berlin. So I'm going to do another experiment which has correctness checked in and conciseness checked in. Uh, basically, let's just go with correctness now uh, because I really wanted to pick this. And I'm going to start over my evaluation just to make you see how the evaluator will sort of catch if the answer is wrong. So I'm going to hit start now. All right, people, so results are in. And so for the very first row, uh, we have what is the capital city for France, and we changed it to Berlin. We have our output generated, and as you can see, the correctness score is now zero because this is wrong. So while all the other scores are one, which is kind of nice. Uh, okay, we have another one with zero. 
And this is what is the speed of light in a vacuum and our expected output is approximately uh, 299792 kilometers per second. And okay, so the output was a bit more specific. So it has 792 and then we have another 458 meters per second. And this is kilometers per second. So not sure this was generated by GPT 3.5 and this was generated by GPT 4.0. So I'm actually counting on GPT 4.0 to be more correct. So again, this is not correct. And we as human beings couldn't catch this since uh, all of these AI stuff, they're pretty uh, on their own, right? We don't have any inclusion within their whole process of text generation. And the same thing for this particular answer over here. So this can be wrong, but we don't have the right evaluator to actually tell us like, hey, your output was wrong and uh, these are the facts around it. So consider it more like test cases for LLMs, something that we can do, we can write, but a LLM can. Hence, a LLM is used as an evaluator in this process, which is kind of really cool. So I hope this gives you a perspective of what uh, we're trying to do here and what we're trying to achieve here. Uh, and we can directly sort of hook everything within the code. So let's go into the code and check that out as well. So I have a script over here and I'm I'm going to hook the script within the comment section. I'm going to put all of this uh, code within a GitHub gist and you can sort of, uh, if you want to use it, you can just use it from right there. You have my blessing. All right. So we have some regular stuff here. We have the imports, uh, which are like around where we need to use OpenAI and we need to use the evaluation uh, instantiation from Langchain, which happens to be, which sort of is provided by QA eval chain. Then we have prompt template, which is again a great feature from Langchain. You can really uh, generalize your prompt and you can just save a template and it can be reused. Uh, the rest of the drill is around .env. I have my OpenAI key, which is stored in my .env file over here. So I go ahead and I am sort of using OpenAI and my temperature is set to zero. And uh, next step is I need to create a prompt template. So this is pretty simple. Uh, I specify my input variables, which will be in form of a query, answer, and result. So answer would be a bit more specific towards what um, the AI answer, but I'm going to show it to you in a second. Don't be confused about it. It's pretty similar to what we have done within uh, the Langsmith platform. So yeah, it says uh, you're evaluating the AI's response based on its relevance and accuracy. So I state the two attributes I need over here. Evaluate the AI's answer based on relevance and accuracy. Provide a score from one to five, where one is the lowest and five is the highest. Only respond with the score, nothing else. So we have our human answer. I'm basically writing is as like is it's an LLM answer, not a human answer, but just to differentiate. So uh, we create our evaluation chain over here. We provide our LLM and our eval prompt, which happens to be the prompt template. Uh, next, I have my sample questions, which is like, what is the capital of France? We have capital of France is Paris. And then we have a question on Romeo and Juliet. So these will be the query part, which will be specified over here. So that's pretty understandable. The next step is the AI answers. Then we have our predictions. I'm just formatting it in this particular format for all my AI answers. So all of this will be morphed into this particular syntax here. So, the, so these are basically my results, uh, which will be used here. All right, uh, then I'm going to start my evaluation and then I'm going to print my answers. So I'm just looping through all my evaluation results and I'm formatting it in a specific way. So again, you can see here uh, for the capital of France, the real answer is this, but I've morphed my answer like Berlin is the capital and the largest city of France. So let's go ahead and run it. So this would be Python main.py. And there we go. Question number one, what is the capital of France? Uh, the capital of France is Paris, which happens to be the correct answer. My AI responded with Berlin is the capital of France, which is wrong. And hence my evaluation score is one, which happens to be the lowest. 
sorry. Uh, then I have question number two, who wrote Romeo and Juliet? And the answer is right. So I get evaluation result of five. So if I go ahead and change uh, this to Paris, and then I go ahead and save it, I, go I come back to my terminal. Let's clear this up. Let's rerun this. And again, now we have five and five. So this is how you can just simply uh, use your evaluations provided by Langsmith within your workflow. If you already have like a chatbot build uh, for your organization or for your specific line. So you can just use it somewhere to make sure the performance of your LLM. So I hope this video was helpful and I hope that it would give you a perspective of how uh, evaluations are important and how we should be using them. So that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.